name is Berhat Jamaner. I am 18 years old. I, I live in London with my parents. I am originally from a Turkish Kurdish background. Uh, my parents are originally from Turkey. And they were Alevis, so that's my old religion. I'm studying A-levels, A-level history, English literature and philosophy and ethics. In the future, next year, inshallah, I want to go into university and study ancient history. Then I want to be a lecturer. That's my aim at the moment. I am, I'm Kurdish. Kurdish people are scattered in around four countries, Iran, Iraq, Turkey and Syria. My family are from the city Kahraman Marash, but originally they say our tribe came from Khorasan region of Iran. Kurdish people, because they don't have a government, they are in different countries, different parts of the world, and they're usually Alevi in Turkey, but majority of them are Sunni. Sunni Shafi in like Iraq and Iran, I believe. First of all, the Alevis in Turkey differ a lot from the Alevis in Syria. For example, the Alevis in Turkey, their religion is mixed with Shia elements, Sufi elements, and Zoroastrian elements. So it's kind of a mixed religion. Alevis, they do believe in one God. They, they believe in the Prophet Muhammad, the Ahlul Bayt. However, recently, Alevism has been, I wouldn't say split into sects, but a lot of people have different opinions about it now. Because it's not really like the mainstream Islam, for example, they don't pray five times a day, they do not fast in Ramadan, the women do not wear hijab, they do not attend mosque. Because of these, re because of these things, a lot of Alevi Alevis realized that their religion is not really Islam. Although a lot of people, well, the government of course, categorized as Islam and the Alevis as Muslims, a lot of them don't see themselves as Muslims because they do not practice the religion. They claim, a lot of them claim that they love and follow the path of Imam Ali, Imam Hussein. However, they don't practice their teachings. The Alevis, the way they pray, for example, completely differs from Muslims. Their day is not Friday, but it's Thursday instead. And like Sufis, their prayer is, they like, it's very spiritual, they do dhikr, they turn around, there's an elder in the middle, he's like the leader of the prayer. This elder plays the Turkish musical instrument called Balama, and he just recites stories of Imam Hussein, the, and he talks about the love of Imam Ali, and the people, that's how they worship. That's the Alevi way to pray. The beliefs that, that some people claim that um, Alevi see Imam Ali as a prophet, that is completely false. Of course, there may be some... I would say ignorant Alevis, like young people maybe, they, who haven't studied about Alevism, who might think Imam Ali is a prophet because of how great his status is in their religion. However, this is completely false. No religious leader or elder claims this. It's not in the books. There is no, there's no such thing. My parents, they are Alevis, but they would claim to be Alevis as well. However, they, I would say they're not practicing. They believe in the Ali. They have Alevi beliefs, I would say, but like they do, they don't pray. They don't they don't practice, like I said. And the way, because of this, I, my father, for example, always used to tell me, "We are Alevi. This is really important. This is our identity." That's why, since a young age, I always wanted to know. Like they said, love Imam Ali. They would teach me the stories. But I cannot love Imam Ali or the Prophet or Allah if I don't know about them. So I wanted to learn more about Alevism. I wouldn't say I'm really that knowledgeable about Alevism, but I started learning about the basics. And what I realized was, I was always a follower of Ahlul Bayt, always. But I found a contradiction. For me, Alevism was not the path of Ahlul Bayt. So when I looked in more into Alevism, I also found out about Shia Islam. I didn't know about Shia Islam before. For me, Shia Islam was like the perfect way, the path of the prophets and the imams. Then I started learning about Shia Islam when I started from Alevism. My family is very big. I've got a lot of family in the UK. I have one brother, one sister. 
My sister, she doesn't really follow any religion. And my brother is five years old. He's very young. That he, um, so he doesn't also believe in anything. But he, when I, for example, when he sees me pray, he tries praying behind me. He's trying to imitate me as well. My other family members, such as my uncles, my aunties, they're not really, they don't really like Islam because of the way have they've been treated in Turkey. For example, there were many massacres in Maraş, Sivas, these eastern areas in Turkey where there are many Alevis. These people got burnt alive, they got massacred. Because of this, these terrible things that happened to them, they have a negative viewpoint on Islam. They don't think it's a religion of peace. They see it as a religion of terrorism. That's the, I would say that's the, the Alevi youth. They're like away from Islam now. Like if you went to the elders, or let me say like 30 years ago, Alevis would have still said they're Muslims. But then now they reject it completely. They say, if we're Muslims, why, why, did, why did we get killed? They're a bit, their situation is a bit similar to Shia Muslims in Pakistan, Afghanistan. So they're away from Islam now. As a result, my family is also like that. They, well, they know, like my my mom, dad, of course, they know I'm Muslim, but they're not really, they don't really support me in this way. I always believed in, in God. I, I don't, I don't doubt, I never doubted God, basically. However, the thing I didn't understand was, Alevism is, I saw issues with Alevism, so I wanted to know more about it. For example, my dad would say, we're Alevis, we have to be here. It's our way of life, so our philosophy. How, and of course, they would claim, my parents, my other family members would claim, this is from God, this is truth. However, I always want to know why is the truth. For example, when you go into Islam, they say the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt, they're the proofs of God. Like, the Quran is so miraculous that it must be from God. Alevis, I didn't see any evidence that it's from the this is the true religion. So I wanted to know more about it. So when I researched more about Alevism and listened to the elders, the teachers of Alevism, the people of knowledge, I also, like I said, came across Shia Muslims. S uh, speakers like Sayyid Ammar Naqshawani. He really inspired me. When I wanted to learn more about Imam Ali. So when I looked into the lectures of Imam Ali, I saw this man, this individual. When I saw him, his lectures, lectures were so inspiring, I watched all the lectures about Prophet Muhammad, Fatima, the 12 Imams. Then I started gaining more Shia and Islamic beliefs when I looked into Islamic scholars and Shia scholars as well after Alevism. So when I saw the contradiction in Alevism, I got put off a bit. I didn't, although it's a beautiful religion, it teaches love, being a great human being, they call insan kamil, a perfect human being. I didn't feel attached to it because although it's beautiful, not everything that's beautiful is true. I didn't feel a connection with it. So I got, I stayed away a bit more away from Alevism and came closer to Islam. Then I started looking into also Sunni Islam. Sunni Islam also Maybe I, I might have been a bit biased because of my family, because of how the Sunnis treated us in Turkey, but I also didn't feel close to it. For example, when I heard about Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, fighting against Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, these things really confused me. Ali and Aisha are both, Allah's both pleased with them. I never understood these things. I saw problems with Sunnism as well. So gradually, when looking into these other sects of Islam, because of Alevism, by studying Alevism, I came across these things. That's how I identified myself as a Shia Muslim. I felt this was the true path. I felt a connection with it. I, and after I became a Shia Muslim, I felt like this is what I was always looking for. And after I've always felt like a Shia, I felt like a proper Shia Muslim. I, I learned about the beliefs and I came closer to it. The reason, I would say the main reason why I wanted to change was when I found about Imam Mahdi. When I was younger, I always, my dream, well, I say dream, but it's very something like people would say it's impossible. I always wanted peace. Because of the conflict my people, my community went through, I always wanted peace. 
when I, when I read about a study that an individual whose whole objective is to bring peace on earth, I didn't care about what, what people said. I had to embrace, that after I believed that as well, I had to embrace the path of the Imam. And I didn't really care what people said. For Firstly, because I believed, what I believed in was the truth. I'm an open-minded person. I always wanted to gain knowledge and see what it is. And I embraced it. Secondly, I believed if I do gain enough, I wouldn't say I'm a person of knowledge, of course, that's obvious, but if I gain enough knowledge to teach and give da'wah about Islam to my friends, my close relatives, I said, that's also a solution. So maybe people wouldn't judge me as much if I gain knowledge because I can debate them, if I gain debating skills, learn more about the religion, why certain things are practiced. When I first became a Muslim, or rather when I first started practicing Islam, like when I started praying, fasting, I kind of had to... I didn't really tell my parents straight away. My father especially was harder to tell him, and I told him much later after. I, I first told my mother, then I told my father. It was very difficult because I used to hear a lot of bad things from Islam and Muslims, from my parents. So when I say okay, I've joined this path, they would take it the wrong way. They would say, you left your religion, the, um, you left the path of your family and your forefathers and you join the enemies. They would see as enemies because they've been massacred by Muslims. So they don't really know about Shia Islam. They, their view of Islam is only Sunnism. They don't know anything about Shiism. So it was hard for me to tell my parents. But one day I was praying. Then I, I, I went downstairs. My mother went inside my room. I saw a prayer mat. When she saw that, she's like, what are you doing? What is this prayer mat? I said, mother, I became a Muslim. I'm practicing. I, I haven't told you. But this is my belief. I'm a strong believer in this. My mother, she understood it. Although she disagreed, she respected my opinion. I told her more about Shia Islam, how it's different. She didn't know a lot of their beliefs. And she found it fascinating that it was actually very close to Alevism. So my, my mother wasn't, it wasn't a big problem telling my mother. Later on, I realized I have to tell my father as well. My father didn't like it at all when I first told him. He got frustrated. He didn't, he didn't understand. He didn't know how I became Muslim. Because he comes from very, he's quite secular and I would say he's got some communist beliefs. He didn't understand how I became Muslim because he raised me as an Alevi. He said, okay, I understood this. I understood you were studying Alevism, your form of religion. But what is this Islam? Where did this come from? I, it was very difficult for me to explain to him. Although I explained to him why I believe in this religion, he says, okay, why are you praying? What's the point of prayer? What's the point of fasting? He never understood these things, but Alhamdulillah, now he's, he's fine with it. This was in the like, first year, he wasn't right with it at all, but now he's beginning to understand it. He knows why I do these things. He understood how I came to the religion and why I've embraced this way of life. The way I learned to practice was from books, lectures, and I researched online, to be honest, how to pray. I found there's differences in Shia and Sunni way. That, yeah, it was online and my reading books. In the beginning, when I first became a Shia Muslim, I did look for mosques, but because the, the place I lived was a bit, it was quite far from all the local mosques. So first couple of years, when I first became Muslim, I didn't go to any mosques. I didn't really know any Shias, maybe one or two in my school. I weren't around Shia Muslims at all. However, after I've joined a group chat, um, I used to follow Instagram pages, Shia pages, and they had a group chat. In this group chat, I've met a lot of brothers. After meeting these brothers, I attended the mosques. But yeah, that's how I started finding the mosques after, when I met Sh uh, Shia brothers online. So I attend Fiqh and Aqaid classes. The way it started was in the group chat, Sayyid Ali Khalkhali was also there. And because my friend was very close to him, he became close to us as well. Then we started discussing with him privately. He used to message us, we used to message him. Then after meeting him, he decided that I want to teach you guys. And it was amazing. 
because I always wanted to seek knowledge. And when he offered that to us, that was amazing. We accepted it. And every week we have private classes. I've learned about Imam Hussein's story since a young age. So when I saw Shia Muslims beating their chests, mourning, and even practicing, like even striking swords on their heads, it wasn't really difficult for me to understand why they did that. Because I grew up knowing Imam Hussein, what he did, how he sacrificed himself for Islam, for humankind, for justice. I knew the details, what they did to him, how, to, how they treated his family in that land. So I realized rather than sympathy, people wanted to be more empathetic, Shia Muslims. They wanted to feel the pain of Imam Hussein so they can also want to fight for justice like Abba Abdullah. So I didn't really find it strange at all. I've actually understood it. I understood the meaning behind it instantly. It wasn't, like, it didn't put me off Shia Islam at all. I haven't been to any ziyarat or the holy shrines, but inshallah, I want to go to Karbala. When I first reverted, I instantly told my friends. I didn't hesitate telling my friends because I was always very close to them. Like many Alevis, now my friends are Alevis as well, they first didn't understand it. They, they said, what is this Islam? But they were open-minded, they weren't like their parents because they didn't really go through the things their parents went through. So they were open to more ideas. I have saw a lot of Sunni Muslims giving dawah, which really, like, it motivated me as well. I also wanted to spread about Islam. Because if I think, if I believe in something and I think it's the truth and it benefited me truly, I would want to spread that, I want, I want to share it with people. So I told my very close friends about Islam, why I believe in this religion, why it's the truth. I said, if you claim to love Imam Ali as well, I prove to you, look, this is, this is the way of Ali. He prayed. He died in sujood. Imam Hussein stopped war to pray. These were, these were the practices of the Imams. Because of that, my two closest cousins and my two closest friends, they also reverted to Islam. They said, okay, although they're not, they're not practicing, they are Muslim by name, like, and I identify myself as a Shia Muslim as well, rather than being an Alevi. So I did it affect the way my friends think a little. They don't have, even my atheist friends, before they had a negative view on Islam, but that changed completely when they met me, when I showed them my beliefs. Yeah, first of all, I want to study ancient history in university. Then I actually want to go Hausa, I want to study Islam, um, more about Islam, Islamic history, Sayyid Ammar Naqshwani is a big inspiration for me, a big role model. I kind of want to do the things he does. I want to lecture about Islam, teach people about Shiism. The thing I would tell people who are studying about Shia Islam, but are feared that like they're scared to embrace the faith, I would tell them, if you studied Shia Islam, you must have heard about the story of Imam Hussein. When you believe something is the truth, I don't think a human being, they have no right to reject it. It's actually selfish if you reject the truth. I know it can be very difficult. I understand that it was hard for me to become a Muslim as well, maybe in the beginning. But the truth is also, is also going to stand out, always. You, that's why we always have to embrace it. And when you embrace it, do not fear, because Allah tells us He will help us. If you put your trust in Allah, He will help you and you will maybe guide people as well. Like you being guided, you, you learn about Islam, that will lead you to guide people as well. So if you, always see, if you see something as the truth, you have to embrace it immediately. This is our duty as human beings, I believe. doesn't matter what people think about us. Because at the end of the day, no, you, if you do believe in the Day of Judgment, no one's going to help us on the Day of Judgment. Only our faithful and the intercession of the Imams. The terrorism or the terrorists who claim to be Muslims, I do not think, personally, I don't think they should. When, basically, when people learn about Islam, it's quite obvious if these people are Islamic or not. For example, Islam is uh, split into two main branches, Sunni and Shia. If Islam was truly a religion of killing violence, why have been, like us Shia, been slaughtered for 1,400 years? Surely, there must be different types of Islam. And when you look into the Book of Allah, the Quran, the Hadith, 
it is clear that these the things the practices these terrorists are doing are not really Islamic. So I don't I don't think you should put people off. When people learn about Islam, immediately immediately you'll see that these people are not Islamic. There are extremists in a lot of religions, a lot of beliefs. For example, I don't I don't believe Stalin should represent communism. So ISIS shouldn't re represent Islam also. It's about what says in the books rather than what the people do themselves.